What's up guys, Paul from the SysAdmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your SysAdmin journey. In this video, we're gonna cover how to do a password audit using the ntds.dit file from Active Directory as well as Hashcat. So before getting started, I wanted to throw out a legal disclaimer and let you guys know that you should get written approval before doing any kind of pen testing or any kind of password audits. And uh, you always just wanna cover your butt just in case. So with that being said, let's get started. So behind the scenes, I've already done a backup of my domain controller using the free version of Veeam. Um, you can do this other ways using like, for example, the VSS shadow copies. Uh, but for me, I prefer to use Veeam because it's, it's cleaner and we're not leaving a whole bunch of shadow copies everywhere on the domain controller. So as you can see here, I've already started the restore process and pointed to my domain controller for the backup file. And if we just click restore, we're gonna wanna restore guest files from Microsoft Windows. Uh, this is this allows us to just grab the ntds.dit file as well as the system file that we need to export the the hashes so once that finishes loading we'll go ahead and select next here to select the day that we want if and you want to enter in a reason go ahead and do that now otherwise click next and then finally go ahead and click on the finish button to get the, the process started so here we're just going to wait for the, the screen to pop up and what i like to do is click on the open and explorer that way it gives us the Windows Explorer view. And then I'm also gonna open up a new Explorer instance. That way we can point to our uh, ntds.dit folder or ntds folder within our desktop. So now that I got those two folders open, we're gonna go ahead and do a split view. And on the right side here, we're gonna go ahead and click on the Windows folder. And then from there, we're gonna click on the ntds folder. I'll go ahead and click continue to make sure that you have access to that folder and then here we're just going to right click the ntds.dit file and then copy it to our ntds folder within our desktop once that completes we'll go ahead and back out out of back to this windows folder and then from there we're going to click on the system 32 folder so we'll go ahead and scroll down just a little bit and then from there we're going to want to click on the config folder and once we're in the config folder we're going to right click the system file copy and then paste it to our ntds folder within our desktop as well so once we got those two files in the NTDS folder, we're pretty much done with the backup process. So now let's make a road trip to our Windows machine. And on this machine, I have a pretty beefy graphics card as well as Kali Linux installed. So let's go ahead and open up Kali Linux. And then here we're gonna wanna export all the hashes using a Python script. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a directory on our desktop and we'll go ahead and type in make dir root desktop NTDS. That'll allow us to create the directory. And then we're gonna to wanna to locate the secretsdump.py file. And the one that I like to use is the one that has the examples in it. So um, we'll go ahead and copy that full path. And then we'll right click and copy. Okay, and once we have that, we'll type in CP for copy. We'll go ahead and paste the path that we just created or we just uh, copied. And then we'll go ahead and manually type in root desktop NTDS and that's the NTDS folder that's on our desktop. So once we have that created, we'll just wanna verify that it is uh, created successfully. And there it is, a secretsdump.py file. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go into other locations within Kali, Kali Linux and basically connect to our host machine using SMB. So here I'm just gonna type in the credentials of the Windows machine that's running Kali Linux. And then once we click connect, we should have access to the directory files. So from there, we'll just go ahead and copy both of these files and we're gonna wanna paste it into the NTDS folder on our desktop. So we'll navigate there. And then from here, we can just right click and paste. And then once we have those two files, then we can go back into our terminal and uh, start the process of extracting the hashes. So now that we have those copied, we'll go ahead and go back in our terminal here. And then uh, we'll navigate to the root or to the NTDS folder within our desktop. So we'll type in cd forward slash root forward slash uh, desktop ntds. And then we'll just do a list to make sure that these this is the right uh, directory that we're in. So next up, we're gonna actually export the hashes from the ntds file and the system and export it into a file called my hashes. So here we're gonna specify the secrets pi, secrets dump dot pi file. And then we're gonna specify the ntds and system files. And then we're also gonna output it to a my hashes dot text all within that NTDS directory. So once I go ahead and hit enter, uh, we can see that the process has already started 
and it's gonna take a minute so I will skip past this part and then uh, come back once it's all ready so that just finished and now it's time to uh, check to see if it actually works so uh, before we pull that over to our Windows machine we're just gonna want to rename it and take out the .ntds at the end so we'll go ahead and click on that rename and then we'll copy that and copy it or and paste it back to our Windows directory so we can just right click that copy and then back in our uh, on the left hand side here we can go back to our Windows directory and paste that in so that's about it for the Kali part so now let's go back into our Windows machine and use hashcat to actually convert the hashes into uh, clear text passwords so the next thing on our list is going to be to get Hashcat on our system. So we'll go ahead and open up our Chrome browser, Google Hashcat, and the first result should be the Hashcat uh, website. So if you don't have it already, you go ahead and download the binaries that are needed. I actually have it on my machine already, and I've already placed it in the root of the C drive. I've also prepared for us a quick guide that we can use, so I'll go ahead and bring that up now. Um, I've had the most success with the RockU word list combined with the dive.rule uh, so if you're just getting started that'd probably be the best one to try out um, if you also wanted to go the brute force option i have an example for that as well but in this demo we're going to go with the word list and rule option so i'm going to copy this string here and then head on over to, to our powershell session uh, just a quick note that i am in the hashcat directory uh, so you'll make sure you want to set your directory to your hashcat location so you can use relative paths all right so let's go ahead and paste in our string that we copied earlier and start auditing some weak passwords uh, i should mention once again that you should always get permission from some kind of authority uh, whenever you're doing any kind of pen testing on networks that are not yours all right so like i mentioned earlier i'm using the rocky word list with the dive rule to see if any users on our domain have some easily crackable passwords um, i've done similar audits out in the real world and this technique works wonders and it's actually really really fun so without further ado, let's go ahead and press enter and finally get this bad boy running. Uh, so you can see that after you press enter here, you're going to see this kind of output. Um, you can see what file you're using and how many passwords your list has. Uh, in my case, the Rocky list has some uh, 14 million passwords that it's going to iterate through. Uh, there are also some keyboard shortcuts on the bottom. So if you type S, it will display another status. If you type um, P, it'll pause, Q for quit, and so on and so forth. But the thing you really want to pay attention to here is the recovery, the speed, and the candidates. Uh, the recovery will tell you how many passwords you've cracked so far from your hashes.txt file. Um, right now, I've been only able to crack uh, one so far. And since this GPU is pretty beefy, I'm able to process about uh, 2,800 mega hashes per second. Uh, so that's basically 2 billion passwords per second. Um, finally, if you look at the candidates, it will tell you the current combination of your dictionary file and your rule file, or if you're using the, the brute force method, it will show you the combination that's generated um, using that method. So if I refresh the status, you can see that I've been able to crack eight of the nine passwords in my hashes file at a rate of 2.3 billion hashes per second. And um, it only took me a little over nine minutes to go through all of those passwords and hashes. And of those eight passwords that we cracked, we have the hashes on the left, and on the right is the passwords in plain text. But the problem is, is that we won't be able to tell who these passwords belong to. So uh, let's go ahead and up arrow on our last command and append the dash dash show and the dash dash username. Uh, and this will get us the usernames, the hashes, and the passwords in plain text. Uh, so we can be able to tell uh, these guys to go ahead and change their passwords to something that's a little bit more difficult to crack. All right, guys, so I hope that this video was able to help you run a password audit in your organization because it's better that you as an admin uh, catch these weak passwords before someone else with bad intentions does. Uh, this is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.